Okay, a week or so ago, one of you asked us if we had a simple method of explaining how to fly a DME arc. This was a project we needed to do anyway, because we were and are developing the Checkride Prep software. At the time, we were completing the Private Pilot Checkride Prep, which is already available to our current customers and will be open to all new customers on the 1st of October. Now the instrument is nearly finished and should be available to our customers by October 1st and to the new customers one week or two later. This is an extract from the new Instrument Pilot Checkride Prep software about to be released that will teach you an easier way to fly a DME arc. Let's take a look at it. One of the most difficult tasks for an instrument pilot to do is without a doubt a DME arc. I rarely, if ever, have an applicant do one. One reason is that the closest DME arc is nearly 100 nautical miles away at Atlantic City, so adding two hours to his check ride just to make his life more miserable doesn't seem like a good option. And second, I know he will probably never do one in his everyday flying. Anyway, so why test him on something that he's never going to do? You can always refuse to do something if the controller tells you you need to fly this, you need to fly that, and you don't want to, you can always say, can I have a different clearance? I'm not comfortable doing that. And he will give you something different. But if in your area there are many DME arcs, you will probably have to do one for your check ride. And also, it is part of the practical test standards. So I will show you how to easily accomplish this task. Let's look at this arc here, and let's say we are navigating to it from it more. So we will have our number one VOR on 115.7, the RBL, with a selection of 357 on the OBS, and the second VOR will be set to Reading VOR with an OBS selection of 028, as that radial defines the beginning of the arc. We will also obviously be flying on a heading of 357 for now. You want to set the second VOR on that because the first VOR we will switch later to the ILS because at the end we will be shooting an ILS. One thing you need to do right away is to identify the final, the end radial of the arc. This will tell us in which direction we will be twisting the OBS to continue the arc, which in this case will be counterclockwise as we start on a 028 and end on a 348. Now, what you will be doing is not a circle. If you actually did the full 360, you would draw out a 30 sexagon, which in actual geometrical term is called a triacontacalihexagon. Uh, that seems a little bit too complicated, so let's just call it a 30 sexagon. What you will be doing is twisting the OBS from 0 to 8 to 348, with 10 degree increments and intercepting them at a 90 degree angle. So, once the radial 0 to 8 starts the center, we can switch VOR number 1 to the localizer frequency of 108.7 and put also the OBS selection on there. You don't need to, it's an ILS, but 162 is the final inbound heading of the ILS, so might as well put that in there. And once the 0 to 8 centers, we will twist the OBS to the next radial, which is 018 and then intercept that at a 90 degree angle. I know you probably have heard twist 10 and turn 80 for the first, then 10 at a time and turn 10, but that's just dumb. As usual, we have a much easier solution. All you need to do is follow the dots on the side of the needle to the end, read the number, and fly that number. In this case, it's 288, as shown. We keep flying that until the needle centers, and again, twist another 10 degrees to 008 and again fly the 90 degree intercept which again is indicated at the end of the dots and in this case it's 278. While you are doing this don't forget to keep an eye on the DME which should always read 17. If it's less than 17 then you need to correct a little to the right and if it's more than 17 a little to the left since the station is to the left. Again we wait for it to center and then twist to 358 and turn to the dots 268. One last time, as this centers, we twist to our final radial of 348 and again follow the dots at 258. Fly 258. Once this centers, we will initiate a turn to intercept the localizer and fly that inbound until the glide slope comes to the center and then 
follow it all the way down to complete the ILS. And voila, you just did your first easy DME arc. As usual, we present easier ways to accomplish tasks that seem much more complicated. And now, not only can we help you pass your knowledge test with flying colors, with our line of knowledge test software, but we can also guarantee you will walk into your check ride with the confidence of a pro and that you will have been through every scenario possible and imaginable and will find no surprises the day of your flight test. So go ahead and visit PassFAExams.com and start learning with us.